Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today we are going to do another one of Emma's training vlogs and again show people what one of her training weeks looks like as a pretty much standard client for Team Blaha. Uh, so we started her week off with maxing out on a 45 degree incline bench, and I believe she got 105. All right, she's never maxed on an incline before, by the way, so I'm like, we should really do that. All right, so we're going to do some more incline work for her. She grinds it, grinds it, grinds it, manages to push through and then lock it out. Now, again, tell a lot about her weak points right there, which it, actually her weak points there are very indicative of what historically we've seen for her, which is, again, a bit of pack. She needs more chest. Uh, that would definitely cause you to stick where she's stuck on the incline. So, first accessory of the day, dead pin benching. So we do dead pin benching. She does a relatively wide grip there. And for those curious, a lot of my people, uh, I have them unracked from the J-hook. She's just choosing to do them this way. But a lot of my lifters, when we do rep work off dead pins instead of a max, one rack from the J-hooks, come down, touch it. We want to unload completely and then drive up. So what's the point of this lift? This builds pecs, number one. Number two, uh, mid-range strength. In other words, even though people are like, well, this is just barely above her chest, it's like, right. But we usually want to be below where we miss if we want to do anything that's going to help us push through. So, again, pectorals tend to cause you to miss once you get the weight moving off the chest. Assuming your back and everything is correct, your technique is good. So again, it's a good pec exercise, right? Getting some good pec work in. Uh, chins, she managed to get eight. I am probably, she's not going to like this. I'm probably going to rotate chins out and replace it with some pull-ups. I might even have her take her football bar and do some neutral grip pull-ups hanging from the J-hooks. And again, she loves chins. So she's not going to like me taking these out for that. But... You know, lifters have to learn to deal with that. But she's up to where she's doing eight full range of motion chin-ups now. As a woman, doing pretty good here. Uh, incline bench, she's again, hasn't done much incline work, so we've been rotating it in. We're going to do more incline work for her. And because, again, helps you off the bottom of the bench. We need to build up those front delts a little bit, and we need to build up her pecs. Now, yes, I am going to talk to her more about pausing on that because you guys see she's touching going as we go. But some of it is because she's fatigued and we're working somewhat off percentages off of that max she did. Uh, this is her second supplemental press of the day. So she's probably really fatigued, doing a lot more touch and go. But again, coach will say something to her. And of course, she watches these vlogs too. And she's always like, really, I need to fix that. I'm like, yeah, we need to fix that. Uh, but it feels like her, her third set there, or her final set, seems like she did a little bit better. But as you guys can see, now we're switching up supplemental work. For a couple of weeks there, everything was looking pretty constant. Everyone's like, oh, we changed stuff up. Oh, yeah, we changed stuff up. And I think for some of my more advanced lifters like this, uh, and some of my more inflammation-prone lifters, I'm, I'm finding that I start rotating them more and more and more. Because this is what beats people up is when we do the same supplemental work. And this is one of the reasons I tell people, you need to just, you need different barbells, you need dumbbells. This is why I try to explain this to people. I'm like, well, I just need one good barbell. No, you don't. You might think that's what you need, but you're not gonna be lifting what I lift at my age, if that's what you do. I wish you the best of luck there. You're gonna get beat the hell into the ground. Okay. You need to be able to change up your supplemental work, and this is where different bars come in handy. And then you guys saw that she also finished off with some one-arm dumbbell rows. Everyone's like, where's the pin lay rows? She doesn't need them. We're doing other work for the back. So we also maxed on her cambered bar. She has never maxed on this bar. She hasn't squatted with this bar yet. So this is a treat. And I think she got 205 with it off of a box. It was either 200 or 205 which she was happy with. And again, you guys notice how that bar swings a little bit. You have to stabilize it. Uh, it's a totally different beast. This is one of those bars that when you go heavy on it, like I'll be honest with you, you go heavy on that bar, you better have a strong low back and you better know how to brace or you will pull an erector. I've had advanced lifters come over and pull an erector on it because they didn't brace correctly when we went heavy. 
Had one do it. I'm talking over 600 pound deadlifter do it. So her Romanian deadlifts. Again, how do we, we change a movement? This is why bands and chains come in handy. What if you want to keep a movement in? What do you do? Put bands or chains over it. It's a new exercise now. It's how we avoid overuse. Just like I talk about changing bars and everything. We have these other options. Add bands. 30 pounds of band tension turns her Romanian deadlift into a different lift. Now she's getting a little squattier than I would like on her good mornings now. And we're going to be messing more with her stance with too. She's been doing these ultra wide, which is again, worked wonders for her sumo. But we also need to bring her conventional up. Uh, so we'll be rotating a little more for her stance width and bars. Because again, she's got a couple of really good bars that don't put any stress on the shoulders. Uh, her and her husband have a cambered bar. They have a safety squat bar, which she's using here. We can go to different stances. And then, of course, she does her reverse hyper. You know, and this is one of those where I, I try to tell people, if you don't have a reverse hyper, this is worth it. Especially anyone who's had low back pain or a back injury of any type in the past. If you, you do not have a reverse hyper in your home, I'm going to recommend you, I don't know, take out a second mortgage on your house. Pick up a second part-time job if you can't afford one. I, and I'm dead serious when I say that. You need a reverse hyper. You really do. You need to find space for one. You need to have one. Uh, that's really... All I'm going to say on that, I'm not going to keep harping that, but you guys know how I feel about this. If you're over 35, you damn well can afford a reverse hyper, get one. You ever had a back injury, you better get a reverse hyper. I don't know, sell your second phone, sell your PlayStation. You need one. Her speed benching uh, went pretty good. She's getting pretty fast on her speed benching. We're happy with that. But her bench is going up, right? Bench is going up. So we expect the speed bench to look good. Uh, but again, she's been pretty fast on speed bench. Was not always the case. We've had to work on it. Um, and then uh, what are we doing for supplemental work here? The, the same things pretty much. She comes in and she does uh, chins. She does a row of some type. We do a flat bench of some type. And then now we're doing an incline of some type. For a while we were doing uh, dumbbells. And we'll rotate dumbbells back in, right? But the beauty is she has multiple bars. We can do incline. We can rotate dumbbells. We can rotate different bars for both the flat and the incline. Pretty similar to what you guys see me doing more and more these days. Uh, but for this week, you know, we, we kept it simple. We kept the straight bar stuff. Right? So we have two angles of pressing and then two angles of pulling. And then she does some, some bodybuilder fluff. Right? She comes in and does some delts. Does some tricep work. Because that's what we need. A lot of people will notice not much bicep work. Well, she's doing shins. Do you really think she needs much bicep work? Maybe if I take her over to pull-ups, we might throw some hammer curls or something in. Um, I'm finding more and more, I don't really like supine stuff. I don't even let my clients do underhand grip chin-ups unless they really love them. And my older lifters, you can forget that. They don't do anything with a, with a supine grip. You disagree all you want. I'm the coach. I want my lifters to have longevity. You guys don't see me doing much supine stuff anymore either. I've rotated it out more and more for a lot of reasons. Uh, and I find a lot of coaches agree with that. If you want longevity under the barbell, maybe not the best thing you should be doing. And then she, of course, does some tricep extensions with dumbbells. And, you know, people will say, well, how do you rotate that? How can you change that? She's got an adjustable bench. We can change the angle, right? Change the angle. She likes cables more for when we do some lateral work, rear delts, side delts, anything like that. She finds that dumbbells bother her shoulders a little bit. Cables don't, so that's an easy solution. And that's, it. that's just like that with any of these movements. You know, people will take a movement pattern that they love and say, well, I really need this movement, right? I love this movement, so I'm going to have to do it with this thing. Well, if it hurts or you're getting inflammation, then you need to change it. And sometimes, even on a small exercise, because small exercises will oftentimes cause our inflammation, you can change from a dumbbell to a cable, especially if you're at a commercial gym, or a cable to a dumbbell, or a band, right? You have options. 
and you need to rotate those small movements anyway to avoid overuse uh speed squats let's see uh, that was better the first one that looked a little slow to me there when i'm looking at it but i've also had people kind of ask hey you know how come she doesn't sit way back well she does sit way back not everyone can do what i do i have clients who can't even do what she does i've had advanced lifters who they're they get knee slide they get knee slide again let, let's talk about longevity under the bar and lifting heavy weights and lifting the most weight possible I don't care that some Olympic lifter has a bunch of knee slide and they do the full squat. How many years are they going to do it? How many of them are still going to be squatting over 600 when they're in their 40s? You say, well, no one needs to be training like that. Really? Guys, you're out here lifting. You're telling me you want to just quit at 32? Man, y'all are some motherfucking pussies. That's what that tells me. No. I, we care about that knee slide. It's a reason we do box squats. That's one of the many reasons. The knees will last a lot, lot longer under a very heavy load. And it just has to do with inflammation and stress on the tendons and everything else. Reason we like power squats. And there's a reason we like box squats. Uh, her supplemental work pretty well stayed the same for lower body for both sessions. Uh, again, we can rotate that more and more as she continues to progress. Uh, again, we'll be changing stuff like the stances on good mornings, changing bars. A lot we can do. But fortunately, they have a lot of tools available, which makes things really nice for me as a coach. Uh, it really does. And again, a lot of people say, well, I don't have access to certain things. Well, why don't you find a way to get access? Right? It's not just about making gains. It's about longevity under the barbell. How bad do you hurt? Right? It's one thing to say, okay, I squat 500 pounds. It's another thing to say I squat 500 pounds pain-free all the time. Right? Nothing hurts in my body versus a guy who squats 500 and is beat up. They still have equal strength. One of them is doing a lot better. And that's what we're talking about. We talk about longevity under the barbell. And then, she, of course, she finishes up with reverse hypers. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.